This week, I'm gonna make some uh, beef jerky. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Before we get started here, I just wanna give you a quick message about, you know, the feedback that I got from my last video. I just wanna say thanks to uh, all the homesteading groups on Facebook that gave me the positive feedback. And I wanna leave a special thanks to the r slash homestead group on Reddit because you guys are amazing. The amount of positive feedback I got from you is thanks a lot because it, it was it was humbling. I mean, it's only 1,300 views, which isn't really a lot to some people, but to me, it it means the world. Thank you. The meat I'm using today isn't exactly great for this application. For beef jerky, you want a very lean cut. This is not a very lean cut. But we're going to make do with what we got, so here we go. Last year, when I processed my cows, I thought it would be a good idea if I took a chuck portion from one of them and cut it into nice big thick steaks, because I seen a picture of it, and the steaks looked delicious. They were so fatty and marbled, but unfortunately, I was wrong. So rather than have them sit in the freezer, taking up space, I figured I would make something else out of them. So today, we're making beef jerky. In order to make use of this terrible cut of meat, first we're going to have to debone it and we're going to have to cut as much fat off of it as we possibly can get. The downside of that is it's going to result in a lot of waste, but I guess my dog is going to be pretty lucky tonight at supper. Usually when you're making beef jerky, you want to find a cut of meat where you can cut long strips off of that run parallel to the grain, but that's not possible today because these steaks are cut across the grain. I'm not saying it's a big deal, it's just not going to have the same texture that beef jerky would usually have. Once you finish removing all the bones and you cut as much fat off of it as you possibly can, you can start cutting it into strips. The thickness of your strips just depends on your personal preference. I cut mine at about a quarter inch thick. Just bear in mind that the thicker you cut your strips, the longer it's going to take to smoke. Once all the meat has been processed, you can move on to mixing your marinade. And once again, this is something that's all about preference. There's lots of great recipes online. I'm sure if you looked, you'd find something that would suit your tastes. But since you're here already, I'll show you what I do. The main ingredient is soy sauce. This is not the good stuff. I personally don't find there to be much of a difference between brands. If you don't agree with that, feel free to blast me in the comments. The next ingredient I use is hot sauce. Use whatever kind you prefer, but my personal preference is Frank's. What did you say you put in the punch, Ethel? Frank's red hot sauce. I put that on everything. The next ingredient I use is garlic. If you have garlic powder, that would be fine. Today I'm using minced. For dry ingredients, today I'll be using some brown sugar. To add a little bit of sweetness to the heat. We're also going to be using some chili flakes. And the last ingredient is going to be black pepper. Fresh ground black pepper is always the best, but use whatever you have. If you're looking for the exact ratios of the ingredients that I'm using today, I'm sorry to tell you that I don't have them. Because I just measure everything by eye. I don't think I have to explain this part, but you take all your ingredients and you mix them together in a bowl. Then you give it a good stir and make sure all the sugar gets dissolved. You can tell when your marinade is ready by the consistency. You don't want it to be thick, you want it to be kind of runny and watery. And don't be scared to give it a little taste just to make sure you like it. And then it's just a matter of adding the mixture in with the meat and giving her a good mix. Once it's thoroughly mixed, you just cover it and you put it in the fridge overnight. Two thousand years later. After you leave the meat marinade overnight, the first thing you're going to want to do is dry off the excess liquid with some paper towel. The reason for doing this, in theory, is because the drier it is going into the smoker, the less time the meat's going to take to dry out. Once you get all the meat dried off, it's time to load it into the smoker. You don't need any special equipment for doing this part, you just hang it over the grate. If it's possible, when you're hanging the pieces of meat, you're going to want to make sure that they're not touching each other, because if they touch, they're probably going to stick together on you. Then after you get the meat loaded onto the grate, you just throw her in. Then you add some wood chips, use whatever kind you prefer. I myself prefer mesquite, but today I'll be using hickory. Because who doesn't love hickory? You're going to want to smoke it between 160 and 180 degrees, and you're going to want to smoke it over a period of six hours. You're also going to want to check it out about halfway through to make sure it doesn't need any more chips. you got to keep a close eye on it, but in the meantime, you can go about your day. How you spend your own day is up to you, 
but I would recommend you deworm a whole bunch of sheep and then deworm a bunch of goats too just to be on the safe side. After that make sure you stop and have a little dog snuggle for a few minutes and then finally make sure you walk through some cow poop on your way to check the meat again. After about six hours you want to open it up and have a little look to see how it turned out. It looks pretty good to me. The only thing left to do is to give her a try and see how it tastes. And the verdict is delicious. The only thing I would change about it is the next time I think I would add a little bit more brown sugar to sweeten it up a little bit more. And here it is. A big bowl of homemade beef jerky made from beef raised right here on the homestead. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next Friday. If you like this content and you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe. And ring the bell too so you don't miss anything. Thank you all for the support. I very much appreciate it.